As a beer nerd, I've had several conversations with friends that go something like this. Gee, Morpheus, I sure do love these stouts. They're so malty, and this one even has some chocolate notes. I don't know how you can stand those bitter IPAs. Luke, what if I told you that the stout you're drinking right now is actually more bitter than my IPA? That's not true. That's impossible. Here, take this red pill and stay tuned to find out why. Hello, beer nerds. Welcome to Beer by the Numbers, the show where we explore the facts and figures from the wide world of beer. Beer is a very subjective experience, but sometimes brewers need objective measurements to assess certain aspects of their beers. Today, we'll be taking a closer look at one of the trendiest stats in the brewing industry, the IBU, or International Bittering Unit. The IBU scale was first invented because it's hard to measure how a beer is, just as it's hard to objectively measure how comfortable your favorite chair is. It's a very subjective thing. Like all empirical measurements, the definition of an IBU is pretty simple. One IBU is one part per million of isohumulone, which is the chemical that gives beer its bitter bite. Isohumulones look something like this and are created when alpha acids in the hops break down during the boiling of the wort early in the brewing process. IBUs are measured on a scale from 0 to, well, there isn't really a maximum, but researchers have found that the average person can't distinguish much beyond 120 IBUs. A brewer can keep stuffing hops into their boil, but it's not going to taste all that more bitter than a 120 IBU beer. Almost every beer you drink will have an IBU between 5 and 120. We're not going to get into exactly how IBUs are measured, because frankly it takes someone much, much, much smarter than I am, but I've been told it involves spectrometers, industrial grade acids, and centrifuges. Now, how can a stout with chocolate and malty flavors be more bitter than a hop forward IPA? Well, it has to do with how many other flavor creating compounds are in your beer. Although the stout has more bittering compounds by volume than our IPA, it also has more malt and other flavors like chocolate to balance out the bitter flavor. The IPA has most of its flavor coming from bitter compounds, therefore its perceived bitterness is higher despite the fact that it's actually less bitter by volume. This begs the question, is there a better way to measure perceived bitterness than IBUs? Well, the most common measurement beer geeks use is the ratio of IBUs to a beer's gravity. Without getting too far into the weeds, gravity is a measure of dissolved solids in a beer. If we go back to our example and look at the original gravities of the two beers in relation to the IBUs, we see that the IPA has a much higher ratio than the stout. Now this ratio is by no means perfect, and many beer geeks argue about the best way to calculate it, but it gives us a better sense of bitterness than just an IBU measurement. Finally, remember that a creative brewer can make a beer taste like almost anything, so measurements can never replace actually tasting a beer. But that doesn't bother me one bit. If you liked this video and think it deserves a high like ratio, give it a thumbs up below. And if you want to be alerted each time we tap a fresh episode of Beer by the Numbers, hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our Twitter. We post cool beer facts there all the time. Stay curious, beer nerds, and as Stephen King once said, I work until beer o'clock.